Hello, I'm Neil Robertson, working on example 1.17 from the book. In this problem, we have a Stefan tube with a binary mixture of acetone and methanol, which evaporates up the tube and then is pushed out by a constant flow of air. If we look closely at the tube, we have our liquid mixture down below, and at the interface between our liquid and our gas, we have we're going to call that our Z position, which equals to zero there. At the top of the tube, we're going to have our Z position equal to delta, which is given to us in the problem. And we're going to have a mixture of gaseous acetone, methanol, and air in the tube. Now, with the Stefan tube, the first thing you want to think about is our Maxwell-Stefan equation, which I have written on the board already, and we'll get to that in a minute. For the problem, we're going to be looking at finding the molar flux of the components as well as the molar um, the profile of the molar fractions of each um, component while it's in the tube of acetone, methanol, and air. We're going to do that through a graph. Um, to start off, we're going to be looking at the scaling of this problem. We have our position, zero at the interface and delta at the top, but we're gonna make that one go from uh, zero to one. And to do this, we're gonna use a new variable called eta, which is the z position over the total position delta. So that way, when we get, we can, it'll be from zero to one, and it'll give us an idea of where it is. If eta is 0.5, you'll be halfway up to two, 0.25 a quarter of the way up the two. Now, since we have a new variable, we're gonna look at how we can use our Stefan, Stefan Maxwell equations and substitute the new variable in for the z. So, we're gonna look at the derivative of the molar fraction of acetone over the derivative of eta times the derivative of eta over the derivative of the z position, which is the same up here, just with our two pieces of a. Now, if you look at this, we're gonna keep this left part, but the right part, since it has the z position out, we can take the derivative of it, which will give us the same as the first portion with the derivative of molar, uh, molar fraction of uh, acetone over the derivative of eta times we get one over delta. So we're gonna be using this with our equation up here to give us a new equation, which is going to be derivative of the molar fraction of acetone over the derivative of eta equals the same as up top, the molar fraction of acetone times the molar concentration, not the molar concentration, the molar flux of methanol minus the opposite uh, pieces. So we have the molar fraction of methanol times the molar flux of acetone over our concentration times our diffusion constant for the Stefan Maxwell equation of acetone and methyl over what we get from up here, our delta minus, and we're gonna look at this portion before we're ready more. The molar flux of air throughout the tube is gonna end up being zero because we know that acetone and methyl are evaporating, but the air is just what was in the tube before it was evaporating, so it's not moving up or down, there's no molar uh, flux. So this portion is zero, so we're just going to end up with one minus the molar fraction of acetone minus the molar fraction of methanol times, which is the same thing as the molar fraction of air in the tube, times molar flux acetone divided by the concentration times diffusion coefficient for acetone and air. 
over our delta again. Now, we're going to look at the order of magnitude since we can, with our given information, have concentration, we're given our diffusion constant, and we're given delta, as well as our molar fractions of those of our all of our components in the tube. Leaving us with just what we're looking for are molar flexes of acetone and methanol since air is equal. So we're going to look at this piece right here and we're going to look at the bottom portion, the concentration times the diffusion cost over delta to make things easier. So first you have to remember that the concentration is equal to the pressure over R constant times temperature. Since we are given um, Before we do that, we're going to look at the, the left part of the equation. Since we know that the molar fraction is the first order, as well as eta is also the first order, so the derivatives is also going to be a first order on the left. So we're going to look at the, have that equal. We're going to keep that there, come back when we have our pieces of information, put those in there. So we're going to look at our bottom portion again have our concentration, our kit, uh, we have about 100 kilopascals, which is the same as 10 to the fifth order for that, 10 to the fifth, over R, which is 8.3, and our temperature is slightly above 300, which will give us a value in the thousands, or 10 to the third, times that by our diffusion constants, which is for gases 10 to the negative fifth, Oh, and then lastly, our delta, which is the first order. All of that, you multiply, divide, cancel out, you get 10 to the negative third for the bottom portion. 10 to the negative third. For the top portion, we have our mole fractions times our molar flux. We know that the three pieces are molar, are molar fractions of acetone, methanol, and air all equal one if summed together. So those are both to the first order. And they're also given. So with those being first order, we're left with just for the top, the molar flux of methanol minus the molar flux of acetone, which to get the first order, we're gonna have to have 10 to the negative third over 10 to the negative third. So both of those pieces of information are also 10 to the negative third. So we can use this 10 to the negative third value for our two molar fluxes that aren't zero as an initial guess to help us with the coding program later.